everybody, welcome back to Taz's Wig Closet. This is Taz. Today I'm going to show you everything you want to know about combing and brushing your synthetic wig style. Are you doing it right? There's the key word that you need to know when combing and brushing your synthetic wigs, and that is gentle. I can't stress that enough. Synthetic wigs are not like human hair. Human hair it has the ability to bounce back. Synthetic fiber does not. So you want to be very cautious and careful to use the right products and the right techniques when combing and brushing your synthetic styles. One thing that you're absolutely going to want for your synthetic style is a wide tooth comb. You'll notice the teeth are set very wide apart and it's a smooth plastic. This will allow it to glide through and release tangles and refresh the style without a lot of friction, wear, and tear. The other thing that you're going to want is a wig safe brush. I have this little pocket size wig safe brush. I absolutely love it and I don't even remember where I got it. But you'll notice that the, uh, the bristles are metal and they have a little bit of width to them at the very ends. This helps it glide through the hair without uh, too much pulling and friction. One thing you want to avoid is using a bristle brush that you would use on human hair. You definitely don't want to do that. I think that would be a disaster for a synthetic style. Another thing is that this little comb here, this came in a grooming kit. I don't even know why I still have it but definitely wouldn't want to use something with very narrow, short bristles like that. One thing you never want to do is comb or brush wet hair. Again, the synthetic hair is particularly weak when it's wet. So be sure to dry your synthetic styles thoroughly before taking a brush or a comb to them. Another thing you never want to do is to start at the top of your style and just take one long sweep to the bottom. Raking a brush or a comb from top to bottom is one sure way to cause too much tension and friction and limit the life of your wig. And so this is another big one as well. Never comb or brush a wig when you could simply finger style or if it doesn't need it. You just have to remember that even though you're gentle, if you do it very often, it will also limit the life of your style through friction, wear, and tear. Now I'm going to demonstrate um, how to go about brushing and combing your wig to extend the longevity of your style. And uh, these are my opinions, uh, but I really feel strongly that less is more uh, because the more friction, wear, and tear you put on your style, the less uh, life you're going to get from it. So let's start with the comb. And what I do is I work in sections um, and work my way from the bottom to the top. So I start at the front typically, and I start at the bottom, grab a section, kind of start at the bottom, and might work my way up. And sometimes there's different layers going on, so I like to get those nape layers first. I don't like to include the nape layer into the side layer when I'm br brushing or combing because I don't want a smooth look. I don't want it to all look the same. I want to retain the layering. So I have my wig safe brush here. And again, the only reason that I would use a brush on any style is for stringiness, something that the comb cannot handle. Um, the brush is going to have the most effect on your wig in terms of wear and tear. So typically um, I would use a brush just on the stringy areas. A lot of times, um, and I've got Heidi on here, a lot of times throughout the day it'll kind of look stringy there at the root. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll hit the little girl's room 
and I will again section off of the hair and I'll just gently work on that root to separate those fibers. Sometimes Heidi can get so stringy at the top that you can actually see through to the underneath the permatease. So I do this quite a bit by just doing the root. We're going to work with this brush a little more later in this segment. A lot of times, especially if it's a heat friendly style or a longer style, it's prone to get a lot of tangles, especially in any areas that drag the clothing, uh, particularly the nape. So I have here um, my Columbia Beltress and Butterbeer Blonde, and I do notice that if I wear it for an extended period of time throughout the day, that it will get a little bit of tangliness right at the nape. I want to show you how to take care of that. Uh, with as little friction and wear and tear as possible. So you may want to invest in some detangler or conditioning spray. A light mist of that spray may help release those tangles a little more easily. And then use your wide tooth comb and section off the nape hair in just little sections like that. And then start at the bottom and work your way up the, to the base of the fiber. Again, start at the bottom and gently detangle each little section. I know that can sound tedious and you just feel like you want to get in there and rip, rip those tangles out, but again, that is not gentle enough and you may actually see a little accelerated a wear and tear on your style. Here, this is a straight style. This is Julia by John Renault in the color Toasted Marshmallow. It's a straight style with lots of layers and I find that if I wear this for any more than just a few hours during the day, I'm having to use a brush to relieve some of the stringiness, especially around the face. If I'm uh, swiping the hair back and so forth, it can get really stringy. That's why I carry this little pocket size wire wig safe brush with me at all times. And the motion that I use to relieve stringiness, again, is not starting at the top and raking my way down. I still section off the hair and I use a, a light picking motion because that light picking motion will relieve, will relieve the stringiness, but it will also uh, fluff it and separate those fibers, which gives it a, a very nice airy look. So here you can see where I do have some stringiness started. So I just take it at the bottom and this is a little hard, it's not on, but it, typically I would be in the mirror doing, doing this. So just picking it, going from the bottom to the top, using light picking motions, very gentle. Straight hair tends to get flat and stringy when you wear it throughout the day and uh, just because of the gravity and, and the rubbing of the hair and so forth. Curly hair, on the other hand, especially a voluminous style, most curlies are, um, but it'll tend to fall flat and kind of lose shape a little bit throughout the day, and you want to be able to refresh that style um, throughout the day as just to make it look like you walked in the door in the morning. So what you would do is resist using that uh, brush on a curly style. I believe a brush would actually do damage and would also lose the curly texture that you love so much about your style. So some quick tips on how to refresh a curly wig, and I do this all the time. If I'm wearing a curly style throughout the day, there might be one or two times throughout the day where I visit the little girl's room and I take that wig off and I vigorously shake it. So I am not combing, I am not brushing, I'm just shaking it because what happens is if the, if the permatease falls towards the cap and this revives some of that permatease and when you put it on, you will have, um, you will have revived and fluffed that style. The other thing with this is uh, a wide tooth comb. So if you are going to use a comb on this, I would definitely only use a wide tooth comb. Sometimes just to revive the texture of this style and any other curly style, 
or just a shattered style. It doesn't have to be curly. It can have an air dried look similar to this, but again, just picking. And if you still have your wig off, you can turn it upside down, take your wide tooth comb, get at the base of the hair where the permatees lives and just gently pull right at the root. You really don't have to do much at all with the ends of the hair, uh, but just gently pull down from the root. That will bring air into the fibers. It will revive and refresh those fibers. I hope that's answered a lot of the questions that you've had about combing your brushing, your synthetic style. See you next time on Taz's Wig Closet.